Hi, in previous episodes we've looked at rendering transparent wireframe meshes, first starting with triangles and then we tried to remove the leading diagonal to create quads. In this episode we're going to look at something slightly different and we're going to start with a model that's got a surface shader on it already and add the wireframe on top of it. Let's get started. We'll continue using the same setup we did for the other tutorials. Here I have my scene with the windmill in it. The first thing we need to do is go to the Create Shader menu and create a standard surface shader. We'll adapt this to be our new wireframe shader. Now let's dive right into the code. The first thing is to set where this shader will appear in the menu. As I put all the other shaders under Unlit, I've added this one into the Lit folder. It would probably make sense to go back and put them all under a wireframe folder, but ah well. Then we have the properties for the standard surface shader. We only need one colour, as I'm going to assume you're rendering an opaque object, and as such we just need to add the wireframe to the front faces. We'll default this to black. Next we'll add a property for the aliasing. This ensures our wireframe lines look nice and smooth. Under the properties you'll find the subshader. This will render the model as you expect, taking into account the colour and the texture assigned. We're only going to make one minor change to this, because we want to render the original content as it was, and just add the wireframe on top. We add in the standard 1 minus source alpha blending mode. This will enable us to use transparency on our wireframe lights to blend them into the original and enable the aliasing effect. After the CG program's end CG marker, we'll add our second pass to the subshader. This is a straight copy and paste from the quad wireframe pass for the forward facing triangles. The only thing I've changed is to remove the front word from the wireframe color variable as we didn't need this. To understand what's going on here, I strongly suggest you watch the first two videos in this series. However, as a very quick recap, with the geom function we're processing our triangles. Firstly we're calculating the edge lengths, so we can create the modifier to exclude the longest edge from the wireframe. This is done by adding on this to the barycentric coordinate system, which in turn means the line from that edge is never drawn. Then the frag function, we're setting the value of each pixel in the triangle. We use the barycentric coordinate system to determine how close we are to an edge. The smooth step function ensures we have a smooth transition for the aliased line. As we're blending this pass into the first one, anything with alpha equals zero will just retain the original model values. But where we're drawing the line, that'll show up. By setting the blending mode earlier, that ensured the aliasing on the line blends into the model's existing pass. Let's see this in action. Let's hide our windmill and unhide our testing sphere. We'll simply change the shader on the existing material to be our lit wireframe on surface shader and voila, there you have it. Hide the sphere and show the windmill again. We'll duplicate our toggle mesh button to create a toggle overlay button, which we'll use to apply our new shader. We press Shift F to focus on the UI button. Then we can offset it to the right at x equals 260 and we'll change the text to read Toggle Overlay. In the buildings.cs script, we'll create another global boolean to maintain the state called Showing Overlay. To control this, we create a new method called Toggle Overlay. First up, we create a variable to hold the shader we'll apply, then we'll toggle the boolean value. If we are Showing Overlay, then we want the shader to be our new lit wireframe on surface shader, else it was the standard shader. Then, using our existing setup, we can just iterate over the materials for the windmill and the blades, setting their shader to the correct one. So back in Unity, we can assign this new toggle overlay function to the button and try it out. Here we can toggle the wireframe overlay on, off, and back on again. Doesn't that look great? Even works with our building animation. I hope you found this tutorial useful in some way. As ever, the full code is available on GitHub and I've put a link in the description below. If you have any requests for shader tutorials, please let me know in the comments. See you next time.